she didn't need to be a Muslim woman to remind me to get it together. Check out our sponsors, Nature's Blends. They specialize in premium Ethiopian black seed products. Their products are fantastic health supplements and also from the Sunnah. The website is in the description link below. You can also use the discount code SALAM10 for 10% of their products. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brothers and sisters and dear friends. Very important topic to be discussed today. Sister Halima Aiden, a Somali sister, who, like many young people, be it men or women, male or female, who go on a journey where they sometimes make mistakes and they learn from those mistakes. And the best of sinners are those who repent, brothers and sisters. So we're going to go through her Instagram story, which was sent to me, and we just want to react to it and learn some lessons because recently I've been reading a book called uh, Beauty Sick. And it correlates beautifully with the sister's decision. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless her. I didn't really know much about her, but let's get straight into it, inshallah. Uh, and here we go. Yep, so this was a story. I screen recorded it. So the first thing that she put here was, What a literal queen. Rukaya Ahmed Aiden. My mum asked me to quit modelling a long time ago. I wish I wasn't so defensive. Sis was literally the only person who had the purest intentions for me. The advice she gave me was, Dean over dunya and her stance has never changed hoyo in somali hoyo means mom hoyo and our hoyos our mothers are always those who always stand behind us no matter mis what mistakes we make so may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless her mother and all the mothers because they go through so many sacrifices for us and may allah bless all of them wallahi and like one scholar said half of the nation are female and they give birth to the other half Let's carry on. So this picture, she says, another theme I'm noticing is that my faith was the strongest around my family. Just look at that jilbab. So this is a, the sister on her story is telling, well, she's on her story, Instagram story, she's giving us her story of her hijab story. Three stories in a sentence. Okay, so she's expressing how she felt strong, like had the actual uh, hijab on at those times. So let's go on to the next one. A group picture, so there's four nuns. I don't know if they're nuns, but all these people who do fancy dresses and dress up as nuns. But anyways, heck, it was on point here too, because I still knew who I was deep. Next one. Genuinely, the last time I was truly happy and content with my hijab journey. Okay, so she's genuinely coming from the bottom of her heart. Okay, this picture is of a young person that looks up to her. And she's posting that as something that she looks up to. And it goes, and this is her statement to the young sister, may Allah bless her. Look at her hijab, mashallah, so beautiful, like the one I used to wear. She's talking about, Sister Halima is talking about this young sister here. And look at the representation I gave to her. Deep down, sis, can't relate. Honestly, same goes for me. SubhanAllah. One thing that we admire and we don't see much of is those who come out, come out, Whoever you might be, male or female, come up, come out and say, you know what? What I did was wrong. And to acknowledge that rather than justifying it. And this is something that should be admired and looked up to. Next one. So this one is, as you guys can see on the screen, <coughs> I used to justify a lot. Wow. Well, I didn't even know. I was just talking about justification. That just came up. SubhanAllah. I used to justify a lot as we as we ever needed these brands, brands to represent hijabis. They need us, never the other way around. But I was just so desperate back then for any representation that I lost touch with who I was. Okay, I don't need my class to read this. So I'm just going to carry on because <clears throat> I, can, I can read close up. He cannot read. Yeah, so now this is very interesting. So they get her to do modeling and she's got jeans over her head. In a hijab, like hijab sense, um, and then this is what she says. But she, the, the, the caption obviously says, "Find your style." But this isn't even my style. Never was. Why did I allow them to put jeans on my head when, at the time, I had only ever worn skirts and long dresses? This is deep. She's saying I don't even wear jeans as trousers, and they're making me put it on my head. That's deep, you know. Like what she's saying is deep stuff. And this picture. I went back to my hotel room and just sobbed after the shoot because deep down I knew this wasn't it but was too scared to speak up. Also, very common struggle when you are the first to do something. Like, what was that hideous green grass thing on my head? I don't know. What, okay, I don't know what it is, but there you go. I should have just politely declined this because where is the hijab? 
Subhanallah, you know, you can see. And when I was talking about the book, the it's called Beauty Sick, and I recommend every single sister, please, please, please. Wallahi, if I if I had the money, I'll buy it for all of you guys. Yeah, but I don't buy the book. The book is so so important. Yeah, I can't remember the person who wrote who wrote it, but she says there was two hundred thousand girls interviewed over forty countries, and she was saying that ninety percent of them were not were not happy with one part or another of their body. Can you imagine that? She was talking to girls that were so skinny, so skinny in her book. Yeah, this I'm not talking about this sister by the way. In her book, that they would starve themselves. They would eat certain little like things, whatever it may be, crisps or snacks or whatever, just so the brain signals the the stomach like, yeah, you're full. Just so like look at the enslavement. And this is the reason why so many women come to Islam. Why? But you need to think to yourself, why is it that Islam is represented as the barbaric religion that beats the wife and kills her and all that kind of madness but most of the women that come to islam uh, most of the people that come to islam are females from the western nations what is forcing them to come to, uh, come to islam because the enslavement that they are in the invisible shackles that they have to carry day in day out you can't go outside uh, without makeup you have to look a certain way the society has made, made you feel more ugly and ugly and you need to look a certain way and dress up certain like this and look like that and do your hair spending hours in front of a mirror you think you're fat you subhanallah wallahi the the the, the stress the 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 can you imagine living like that botox i need to get my lips done i need to get this done muslim sisters are falling for this today i know the struggle is real i can never relate how the hijab is hats off to you guys literally but the thing is brothers and sisters and sisters who are watching this wallahi be free you would only find we're all enslaved to something you only find true freedom when you enslave yourself to the one that has created you that's the reason why when you wear the jilbab you're not objectified or sexualized this is even though some feminists will disagree with it because when a man is talking to you he's talking to you not talking to you or whatever else is present there brothers and sisters the hijab is there to uplift women yeah now this doesn't mean that allah has legislated that allah didn't say women cover up because men can't lower the gaze no men have to lower the gaze regardless of how you dress the point is that it's there to uplift and honor you and you're not a sexual object let's carry on so i took what you all said to heart and probably misinterpreted it as well i remember wanting to be the hot hijabi as if that didn't just defeat the whole purpose a hot mess is what it tr it was truth it was truthfully subhanallah may allah bless her for her honesty Looking back now, I did what I said I would never do, which is compromise who I am in order to fit in. Thank you, Hoyo. Thank you, Hoyo, for never giving up on me. If I continued down this path, I would have definitely lost my hijab completely. Hoyo, we respect you. Big up. May Allah bless you, uh, auntie, from UK to uh, America, wherever you are. May Allah bless you. Wallahi, for never giving up on your daughter, regardless of what others said. And in this picture... It says, I don't know if it says EU Child, the confusion was real on this day I fought my entire team I fought my entire team to wear this look And even Denise was like This isn't the real you Who's Denise? We're going to find out who Denise is It's very interesting That's how rebellious I was feeling at the time The, the pressure was getting unbearable And I'm sad to say I went through a period of representing the hijab This is Vogue magazine Yeah She said she had to delete this off my page because honestly this wasn't representation this was mockery and i am so sorry i was too young and naive to see it back then but at the time i justified it because look it's vogue Ara arabia but wrong is wrong no matter how hard you try to convince yourself may allah bless you sister subhanallah how many people that we have today who use the hijab you know and d justify it you know to to to, say, to sales or reach fame or whatever etc uh, subhanallah and this is the saying you know what this is not the hijab we know may allah bless her and here also never again taking a job that will require me to change my scarf style just to show off a necklace i'm a hijab wearing woman i can wear rings and bracelets but i what but what i but what do i need a necklace for and this one it says i really thought damn i did that not even realizing how much i was hurting the little hijabi i used to be by now showing the world a new standard for hijab that could be comfortable with essentially erasing my hijab completely that caption should have read boo boo the clown subhanallah look how harsh she's criticizing her own self because she understands the damage 
brothers and sisters. And sometimes when we're given these opportunities as sisters or brothers, whatever it may be, when a big brand comes, Armani came to me, oh, and says, yeah, you have to do this, but you just need to cut your beard. Get lost, bruv. Bounce yourself. I don't care if you're Armani, flipping Gucci, uh, Parada. I don't give a damn. When your Iman comes first, you do not look up because you don't feel inferior. Oh my gosh, Armani came to me. Oh, oh my gosh. What the you have to say, what, you got gin inside you, you need rocky, what the hell are we bugging out for? Because it's a big company. And that's what happens. We hear it, we feel inferiority complex. Yeah? This colonial mind, oh, you know, you know, I need to. SubhanAllah. And this is what's happening. Do not, brothers and sisters, because what happens is Allah will humiliate you with that very thing that you put before Him. He, this is a very powerful one. This is so powerful. Denise that she was talking about is that girl in the back. Look how. Her shock of her face, yeah, and Sister Halima herself admits it because Denise has been with me since day one of my career. And looking back, sis really had my back always. She tried to talk to me out of so many looks, but I was too busy trying to look cute and feel accepted. Her face, her face says it all, and she didn't need to be a Muslim woman to remind me to get it together. Let's read that again. She didn't need to be a Muslim woman. To remind me to get it together How many times you see non-Muslims Looking at hijabis and haram relationships Or whatever it may be Or doing things And they're thinking You're not supposed to do that Your religion doesn't teach you that right And non-Muslim telling you Whew. Deep Now I started off so strong But no worries I'm coming back May Allah keep you firm sister Inshallah Subhanallah And Wallahi Islam on this Look at that mashallah Wallahi it's, it's absolutely amazing and she says, yeah, Halima, what was your reasoning? But honestly, I'm glad that I went through all the confusion because now I can warn you guys about where I went and where I made the wrong turns. She's telling you sisters out there, she made these mistakes. Don't do the same. Don't go there and learn your lesson. She's done it. And here she's talking about this was this is where I went right. Getting to meet other fellow hijabis doing remarkable things and breaking stereotypes. That's it. You know, just because, you know, you don't, you don't need to fit into this this culture, this society As a hijabi woman you can do so much I don't understand why people feel like you, it's, it's all about beauty If you read the book The Beauty Sick You will see that she says that A woman only known for beauty yani, Is this what you, is that all you're known for? Can you imagine As a woman the only thing you're known is about your beauty Are oh, you taking are you taking good care of your hair A skin, a this or that Wallahi, wallahi If we gave If our sisters If our sisters gave 10% of the effort they give on their skin, their eyebrows, their hair, their eye, then the lens that go in the eye, the Botox, the the the, the gym to look the, the this, which color hijab, uh, this clothing, that wallahi, the effort that they go through, and so do brothers. But I'm just talking in this specific topic. If we gave ten percent of that to our soul, and nearly finishing off diversity. Where? I was too afraid to ask back then, but not today, Satan. Plus, bring back the smiles because you all made us look like half-dead, soulless gremlins. SubhanAllah. And I'm going to finish off with this, brothers and sisters, because I think this was very, very powerful. Um, and we've got some idiotic person here saying, please don't take advice from your mum. She's not educated. You just stopped your own bag. You could have built generational wealth. Sad. When somebody's whole happiness and motivation or objective in life is to think that money makes you happy You'll have idiotic comments like this To think that money is going to bring you happiness And this is a brilliant reply from Sister Halima To someone, I don't know who it is Maybe some this industry, someone in the industry You all had, and we'll finish on this <clears throat> You all had four years to learn about me And why did you never remind me once to FaceTime my mum Or even ask for yourself Why did you guys make me feel like I had to abandon my mum You put your whiteness into my brand You whitewashed my hijab I came to you at my most vulnerable and you used it to control me and basically ride my coattail all the way to the bank. But I found my real hijab. Say thank you for a say thank you. So thank you for allowing me to wake up finally. La ilaha illallah. Alhamdulillah. Wallahi. And like we said before, brothers and sisters, she has come to the realization, subhanAllah, and how she was in a vulnerable state and was taken advantage of. And this happens in the all kinds of industries, pornography industry, you name it. They take advantage of you, give you all these promises, use and abuse you, and then bye-bye. Don't need you anymore. Next, please. Brothers and sisters, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless Sister Halima's mom, Hoyo, and 
Um, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep Sister Halima firm. And I ask every single one of you guys, please, sisters, read the book Beauty Sick. You are all beautiful in your own way. Do not let this society make you feel ugly. Do not try to be, reach a standard that you're never going to reach. You're never going to reach it. Never. Be happy with yourself. Find true freedom within yourself. Connect yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because indeed with the remembrance of your Lord, of Allah, do hearts, do hearts find peace. We are created in this way. Nothing, brothers and sisters, as in this life with all these materialistic things, Allah is telling us that only with the remembrance of Allah do hearts find peace. Same as when we go into Jannah, we're going to seek Allah's face. And when Allah shows His self to us the way He fits His majesty, that we're going to, that's going to be the most amazing thing. Nothing in Jannah is going to be equivalent to that. So just in this dunya, we seek Allah's pleasure. And that is what brings us absolute happiness. Brothers and sisters, Allah is promising that to us in Jannah when you're going to have everything you want. But seeing Allah's face and seeking His face, Subhanallah. Till next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Please send this video to Sister Halima. May Allah bless her, inshallah. And yeah, goodbye.